I don't know. The 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 differential from level four and five for druids isn't that big of a deal. Well, I guess level three spells, which I don't know. How many spell slots do you start with? They should just moon. all be moonbeam. <laughs> moonbeam. Moon um, I did a lot of research on moonbeam because it's a spell that is hotly um, debated in the five E community. Luckily, Sir Jeremy Crawford, um, which Steve had already talked about recently on his thing with Shield Bash, um, has a topic on moonbeam that he released kind of off the cuff of that how spell casting works in 5th edition article that he wrote up, um, which I believe Lex has linked somewhere on a blog or something. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, on a, one of his tweets, he was talking specifically about Moonbeam and um, how spells like Moonbeam work, where if you move it around... Um, like, Moonbeam works the way I think it works, luckily, from Mr. Crawford, he, although he says, be careful and don't abuse it, otherwise you'll make DMs upset, which is totally <laughs> cool because I don't want Lex upset at me. Um uh, and you know, no matter how hard I try, I'm still not that big of a min maxer. Um, uh, cause if I was, Ulysses would not have run away from the party. Uh, um, <laughs> this is also true. I, I also, I discovered that my microphone that I use has a ball joint that I can rotate it up and down. Like oh. used to, I had it like tilted. So, you know, it would face me better. And just right now, I or not right now, but just like five minutes ago, I discovered it has a ball joint on it. Anyways, um, but spells like Spike Growth also say, you know, when a target enters it, it takes damage. That's how Spike Growth works. But when you cast it on a target, it doesn't take damage because it specifically says that. Mm. So as long as you don't move. But as Moonbeam, when you cast it on the target, it takes damage. And on its start of its turn, it takes damage. And on every turn that it touches it once, it takes damage. So sadly, or not sadly, quite quite understandably, you can't just make the beam go back and forth <laughs> um, across one target and delete it. Um, but you but you could hit, like, so it has 60 feet of movement, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I was, like, in my head, I was, like, so 60 divided by 5 is 12. So you could yeah. presumably hit 12 different creatures on a turn if they happen to be lined up in yeah. a... Perfect. In a yeah, in a perfect like group, which we've seen maybe once or twice. Um, like I can you know, on the one caravan versus like the goblins that are knolls or whatever they were that attacked. You enter, enter the, the, the big line of them. Um, that would have maybe been useful, but uh... hey, Lex. Yes. My um passive perception went up one since we're level five now, and we get an extra proficiency bonus. Okay. Mm, that also happens now. Fifteen. I that think also. those are uh, automatic. Let me see. Yeah, as long as you works. increment your now level. Whoa. Okay. So those... on the character sheet. Okay. Mm, that right. also happens now. Fifteen. Whoops. So it takes I think it off those of are... our character sheet. Uh, yeah. Right. Like where you know under classes it says you know like you should have rogue five. It uses yeah. that number to tell your different things like that. What's My, nice about uh, this? bonuses it's just level five it doesn't be have to be in a certain class yeah it's ca it's character level not class yeah level. my macro is actually broken because your or ulysses isn't here oh it's not like it just like broke the whole mostly thing parting shot from ulysses party is <laughs> mostly level five I bowl okay. the let's see if it works okay so Thern is yours now 15 yes cool so it's updating automatically because I figured out a way to do it where it grabs it from your character sheet nice oh my gosh you guys have some crazy perceptions yeah like in 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 uh, my other group, I've got a druid or not a druid, a monk with twenty decks, which is just great. Twenties um, are just ridiculous numbers in fifth edition. Yes. In fourth edition, everybody's got a twenty. Some people have two twenties, you know. But in fifth edition, a twenty means something. Uh, just to have like a seventeen on stealth passively is pretty nice at level four 
My stealth is 16 passive. But we also rolled for our stats. Oh, okay. We rolled four dice, six drop rolls. It's a lot easier to get a 20 when you roll for them. Mm. I'm, I'm actually less impressed knowing you rolled for your yeah. stats. <laughs> so I rolled on a, um, I got a 17, and he's a human, so 18. When we hit level four, I put it to 20. At level four, you can't have a 20 otherwise, I don't think. Can you? I guess you could. I don't think so. I think yeah, the I mean, highest you can have at level one, unless you roll is 17, right? Yeah, so a 19 is the highest I guess you could have. Yeah. My passive what's persuasion the... is a 19 right now. Well, what's what's the highest number in, 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 what's in my standard high? array? 16 or 15? 15. 15, okay, so yeah, it's going to be... Yeah, 17 at level 1, and then 19 at level 4. My sleight of hand and my thieves tools are up to 19 and 9. Nice. Yeah. So adding 9 onto a sleight of hand check is going to be nice. Tyvel actually has the highest passive perception now with a 16. Nice. Oh. I would, with their wisdom bonuses. Oh, I, I would have thought that d doesn't um does Dwayne or does Mastic not tie Tyvon? He has a thirteen. Maybe he hasn't leveled yet. I think he said he already leveled. Yeah. Uh, he probably doesn't have proficiency in it. Maybe yeah. Maybe he's not uh, perception. Oh yet. yeah. If you don't have proficiency, you don't so get your, be... your proficiency bonus. So yeah. But, uh, you know, the perception and insight also, you know, fits with Tyvo because he's supposed to be a think first, act later kind of guy. Except when we fight bad guys. You say like maybe you want to rub some of that off on Uthgrim. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Uthgrim took serious negative respect points on Tyvo. Yeah. Like, if we were rolling... I, I, from himself, man. Uh, like, if, if, if it was a quantifiable number, Uthgrim went in the Tyvo landscape. Which it's not. Um, uh, but you know. You're not tracking like relationship statuses like in Dragon Age or something. Yeah, like no. That. I mean, like <laughs> Tyvel has we views, of the course, romance. on different okay. characters. Um, but uh, you know, it's not like I'm anally keeping track of it, like first place, second place kind of thing. Is everybody leveled, and does anyone need to roll for hit points? Uh, I'm rolling. Okay. Rolling. I mean, oh, you're so say ballsy. Don't. Man. You're so ballsy. Yeah. That's say don't. But... Kyle. See how he does. Mm -hmm. I'm rolling for mine, because even if I rolled the lowest, I'd be at my average. Yeah. Dwayne is going to roll for his, too, I think. Is yeah, I think, I think he said he was. Good for you guys. Uh, yeah, nope. Well, if I was Dwayne, I would roll two because he did the math, and even if he rolls a one, he'll still be above the average. Yeah, that's how so. mine's going to be. Even if I roll a one, I'll be above my average. But you can lock in the gains. Lock yes, that is gains. true. Quit while you're ahead, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Nope, I'm going to do it. I, don't know. I, I respect those that are willing to roll. I'm not rolling. What do I take? What's your di hit die? Four, six, so you take four hit points? Four yeah. plus any con that you yeah. have. Four plus con. All right, 21. Plus feet points, I guess. I Let's make it a good roll. What? Nice. Totally average. That's what I get. Oh, you're I rolling an eight. Roll. I, I thought you were rolling a six sided for some reason. That's still, yeah, that's average. You you dodged the bullet there. <laughs> I would have been above average anyway, either way. So, adds. And if only we could use inspiration on that roll. <laughs> um, if I could, I'd do it. There's a barbarian in my other game that started the uh, get as a human, and his feet was the one that gives you additional hit points at every level. And so he's level four with like, over, I don't know, like mid 50, high 50 hit points. Nice. So how much health does Uthgrim have now? Crazy. Uh, 55. Nice. Thanks. I got 38. 
I like to think that. It's got 60s then. It's level, well, he's at level 5 now. But I've got I've got a plus 3 on Khan, which is a... Yeah, oh, that, that helps. I got a yeah. plus 1. When I switch over to fighter, I'll uh, be getting one less per level, too. Does anyone have anything they want or they need to ask or way to kill time before Dwayne gets here? I mean, I was thinking um, just kind of as a future thing, uh, like we're going to hopefully get magic items. Um, yeah, eventually. Um, yeah. <laughs> so this is something uh, that, you know, I was just going to plan on discussing at some point on the forum, but seeing as we're here, this is just, I guess, because it's, yeah. it, I, I, I'm, I'm not passionate about this one. So I, you know, uh, but uh, so when I transform, of course, the it's not you know the animal is limited to things that the animal can do so if i get magic items like like the question was say if i got a magic necklace and i transform or a magic earring could the animal still wear it because depending on the animal i could say see a wolf wearing an earring yeah, they well, you're, you have two choices, right? The the items either like become part of your form or the animal's wearing them. Yeah, so if it's, it's something that the animal can actually wear, then I think it would still work. Because it's like either, yeah, they can either go into me, be on me, or fall to the ground, which I don't think too many people take. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. especially because when you turn out of an animal, you're now standing there naked. Hey, guys, what's up? But the um, the number of items you could do that with would be pretty small. Yeah, because I like magic weapons, of course, wouldn't work. Um, armor. Well, the question is, certain armors like mithril, I think, change sh size to the wearer. Certain magical items. I, I I'm not sure if mithril specifically does it, but like, would a bear be able to wear magical bear armor if I was wearing <laughs> armor like that? No, I I don't think so, because it's not a humanoid. You know? Yeah, so um, that was just more of a joke than anything. So yeah, <laughs> you're gonna have to think of earrings. Tyvel's just gonna get loaded, filled with earrings. Or if I turned into like an animal with tusks, it's, it's such could, an interesting like. I could visual. wear the rings on my tusks. It'd be great. Like seeing this wolf running around, he's got this like earring dangling off. Like, yes. <laughs> the wolf's currently wearing a green scarf. So, oh, that's right. Yeah, that's so a funny. Looking scarf. Yeah. Like wolf. I mean. Got an earring. You got the scarf. Yeah, it's a hipster wolf. It's got like a like a half like backwards like pompadour thing or whatever they do. You know, it's got the shaved sides, but really yeah. on the top. His parents don't understand them. Yeah. So I came up with a great money sink today, Ooh. which I'll I'll I'm not gonna tell you now because it'll spoil a surprise. But probably this session you'll casino. you'll figure out what it is. <laughs> is it a casino? Because totally down for that um question we know two guys that will go to the casino for sure. question a hundred yeah. foot radius means it's 200 feet across right yes yeah because radius yeah. means from the center to the side that spell just gets crazier the more i think about it <laughs> what spell plant growth yeah plant growth's pretty cool it's a good spell like spike growth which is an amazing smell especially against stupid things like growth is an amazing smell. Smell, yes. <laughs> Wait, what's your what's the diameter of that spell? Two hundred. That's it's crazy. Two hundred feet feet. If I cast it as a single action, and if I cast it over eight hours, it's a one mile. Yeah. Becomes, Wait, bards get plant growth? That's kind of weird. It not becomes. Weird. Um, I mean, not weird at all. Thick and overgrown, and then Bible turn makes it turn alive. Yeah, yeah, but if you spend like eight hours or whatever doing it, you can cause a, um, you know, countryside farming communities' livelihood to like double. True. A year. It's amazing. Man, and based upon the price of wheat, we could easily make yeah. like five, <laughs> ten copper on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys an opportunity to buy a granary. That that's the plan. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, like, sweet! Epic level future. Tyvel wants to like start up some kind of guild or something based on, um, you know, helping people. 
I kind of charitable. I kind of like the the granary idea because it ties into like we could have like a synergistic multi-level business that feeds into the fucking pints. Because yeah. we can like grow our we own, grow grain, our own yeah. make our own beer, <laughs> like all levels will handle it all. Yeah, we could have a vertical monopoly, it'll be great. And and I'll, I'll use plant growth to make all of the mm. all of the plants just so much better. And I could use plant growth. Oh wait, yeah, that's... And I'll just try not to kill anybody out of hand. <laughs> Welcome, well, we Dwayne. keep Uthgrim out of the kitchen. Oh, sorry I'm late. Sorry. Are, you, are you leveled? I'm leveled except for hit points. I love it. Except I love it. I've got to roll my hit points. Well, Trevor rolled and he he as, got the average. So rolled as, dice. As, as reckless and suboptimal <laughs> as it may be, Steve. <laughs> well, so <laughs> far it's been optimal for you. <laughs> I still love it though, man. I like. I just <laughs> got a gamble. I um, love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, I'm just gonna roll it straight. Um, wait, I, I'm gonna have plus three from Constitution and plus one for being in Hill Dwarf, so I'll just add that in. Okay. And wish me luck. Come on, eight, eight. Eh, three, seven. Uh, so, womp, womp, womp. Suboptimal. It definitely. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Could have had nine. You're still on top. You're still on top. Yeah, that's right. You're still ahead. <laughs> yes, I'm still plus. Plus three above where I would be for an average fifth level cleric. So I'm plus five where I'd normally be. Nice. So yeah, otherwise I'm all I'm all leveled up and ready to go. Awesome. All right. I'll now do three d six attack damage. Nice. Who all got extra attack? Just Steve. Yeah. Just, okay. Ulysses would have. He would have. If he didn't bail on you guys. Yeah, he didn't bail on you guys. To go smoke opium somewhere. Yeah. To go get <laughs> go back to go back and go sulk in the desert. He is in an opium den as we speak. Yeah. Yeah, right now. That no, he's, that he's hanging out with that green dragon. That's right. He tamed it. Oh no. He's right riding now, it he around still might in be the in desert. Greenest, actually. <laughs> Because he, he did say he goes to stop at Greenest for a time. Uh, Don't forget those of you who prepare spells based on uh, RNL. Never mind. You don't prepare spells based on your proficiency bonus. What goes up? Oh, your spell attack goes up now. Is it another plus one? Yeah. To spell attacks. But the number of spells you can prepare does go up every time you level. Yep, every level. Yep. I got a plus six to attack now instead of a plus five. And Chrissy, what spells did you pick? I picked plant growth. You just get the one. Yeah, I'm a bard. What about Kyle? What'd you pick? Fireball and winding wall. <laughs> nice classic. Fireball damage all the time. <laughs> I That's love it. Need. Look out! I love it. I love are it. Are they in a line or they're in a crowd? Either way, I've got them covered. <laughs> and and Dwayne, I guess you don't have to pick spells, do you? You just get them all. I get them all, but I prepared, <laughs> and I will always have prepared revivify. So ah. if somebody dies and I can get to get to them within one minute, I can bring them back. And we got two um, of the diamonds or whatever. Yeah, we've got two, yeah. and it doesn't have to be a single diamond. It could be a collection of diamonds, at least the way I read it. So Is gloves are coming like off. <laughs> uh, yeah. What's the what's the cast time for Revivify? Is it just an action or something? Uh, one action. Touch. Oh, instantaneous. Wow. So, I, ladies and gentlemen, death means nothing to us anymore. No, no, no. Yep. It Gloves are coming off. To us up to a minute. Yes. Yeah. Up to a minute. He's yeah. now one minute to do it. Yeah. That's like the best way to ensure your uh, value to the party. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to treat you as like our walking insurance policy. So <laughs> I either have to kill Mastic or I have to kill more than two of you. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I also get spirit guardians, and we've seen how effective yeah. that is. So oh, yeah, yeah that spell is or, nuts. Or keep them distracted longer than six turns, and then they can't get revived. Yeah. And Crusader's Mantle, which I haven't even read that one yet, so I better look that one up. But I have that one prepared at all times also. I think that's a pretty good spell. I don't remember what it does, but I remember thinking it was cool. Uh, sounds great. You know what would be another great uh, Dick GM move if you wanted to prevent Revivify? Kill the guy, then run off with the corpse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Still do need a corpse. Would that be a, 
knocks you off the ground and you're gone. Yeah. Would not That's have not been able to idea. help the cook that was slaughtered last week because it doesn't regrow any body parts. <laughs> and he does so, need a head. Yeah. I think that's a paladin spell, that Crusader's yeah. Mantle. I don't know. Does it give you a plus two, plus two in protection from creatures? Oh, wait, that's Holy Mantle. Never mind. Crusader's Mantle is a 30-foot aura. Like magic um, gathering uh, jinx. Until the spell ends, the aura moves with me, centered on me. While in the aura, each non-hostile creature in the aura, including me, deals an extra 1d4 radiant damage when it hits with a weapon attack. Nice. That was close. And, and it's concentration for a minute. So. That'd be nice against those parry tents because they wouldn't get damage reduction against the radiant damage. Oh, yep. that's pretty sweet. Yeah, I think radiant is good for a, a number of different things. So yeah, it's really good against undead. Because yeah. a lot of spooky undead have re re resistance to a lot of things. Yeah, and if I turn undead, I automatically destroy them if they're CR one half or less now too. Nice. They're just smoked. But we My vicious hit. mockery damage went up <laughs> nice. from one die four to two die four. And did you, didn't Bardic Inspiration also get better? Somehow? Yes, it got yes, a lot better. Yes, it's a D8 now <laughs> instead of a D6, and I get it on a short rest instead of a long rest. Oh, cool. So you can throw out even more, which is, what, three times per short rest now? That's awesome. That is awesome. I'll be All right. five someday. So you guys yeah. have... Let's see. You have another day of travel where not much interesting happens. And then the next day, let's see, when does this happen? The next day, uh, you are all woken up very early in the morning, like first thing in the morning by someone screaming. And when you get up, you see a crowd gathering by one of the merchant wagons that you know to be one of the wagons uh, operated by cultists. And as you walk over there to kind of see what's going on, you see laying on the ground uh, a man. He's laying on his face. He's got a big gaping wound in his back, and he's laying in a congealed puddle of blood. And you recognize this guy as one of the, one of the cultists. That you guys have been following. I didn't do this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did uh, I'll go up and uh, did he just die? Uh, well, it looks like he's been dead for a while because the blood is congealed. Okay. Um, looks like he him? was killed sometime in the night. Okay. Stab or is, is there any indication of what killed him? He. It looks I like he was I stabbed in the back with dead. by some kind of sword probably say probably you've got a druid that'll be able to cast plant gross so. and actually now that i look again at my my book the congealed puddle of blood is actually under the wagon it looks like someone dragged him out oh. and as you guys walk forward uh a kind of short stocky woman with kind of a broad mean looking face that you know to also be one of the cultists points at all of you, specifically pointing at Thurin. And she says, it was him. I know he did it. Did you kill it, David? We don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I would have put it past him. I don't know how drunk I was last night. Oh, shit. He just incriminated himself. Yeah. <laughs> what if I'm, you're the lawyer here. I said sword. I have Ray Pierce. So everybody kind of looks at you guys, specifically at Thurin. People start grumbling amongst themselves. And another I'm uh, gonna try to hide. another Can cultist, hide uh, not with everybody looking at you. Oh, come on. <laughs> An another cultist, uh, kind of a muscular bearded man with quite a few scars on his face and arms. He says, yeah, there's something not right about those guys. And that one in particular, look how shifty he is. Search him. I'll bet he has a weapon that matches the wound. So, now I'm part of the crowd. So, so yeah, um, people want to people want to search you, Thurin. Are you gonna let them search you? They want to search me. 
Yeah. Navarro wants to get in the middle of this. Since when is being shifty a crime? If being shifty was a crime, we wouldn't have allowed that guy on our caravan. Points at the silent guy. Why? Why is this? Why are we searching him? We have no proof other than he said, he said, she said, one way or the other. They're Search him. See if he it, has a weapon so that matches you know. the wound. I'll bet he does. I'll bet he's got two of them, the woman says. How about this? How about you fuck right off? Spooky. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to back up uh, Theron at this point. He's been nothing but honest as far as I know. There was that one corpse incident, but we can talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> well, surprisingly, uh, Asbara steps forward and actually tries to calm the crowd. He's like, people, good people, leave this man alone. You have no proof that he did anything wrong. Idiot probably fell on his own sword. Yeah, let's go examine the body a little bit more. Um, okay. And just make sure it was a slashing wound and not a piercing wound. Um, you can make a medicine check. Oh, okay. Mastic coroner. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> CSI. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, it was definitely a stab wound from a from a bladed weapon you think it probably wasn't a rapier it looks a little bit too big for that probably a, a long sword or a short sword okay um anything else do you want like an investigation check sure uh, this is not gonna be probably good but yeah. Yeah. uh okay well with that roll you can see uh that there are quite a few footprints around the wagon but it looks like that they're all from people crowding around this morning. None of them look old enough to, to have been from when this happened. Uh, you think that the ground uh, was actually like swept free of prints. Like you can oh. see some evidence of that. So whoever did this knew what they were doing, at least a little bit. Who is this man? Um, I'll just address the crowd. Who is this man? Why, why would someone want to kill him? He was, he was one of our, one of our companions. The woman says his his name was Jevin. Jevin. He probably killed him to to steal from him. We're carrying many valuables. Well, you know, I bet the best thief in the world could probably steal from the cultists. <laughs> Is uh is the gnome around or or whatever her name was? Uh, yeah, yeah, she's kind of hanging hanging near you guys. Glimpse over, yeah. Though not part of your group since there's still quite a few accusing glares pointed your Does way. Does she carry a weapon? <laughs> uh, let me check. I'm sure she does. Let's see what she's got. She's the only other known shifty individual. Uh, she does. She carries a short sword. <laughs> hmm. Uh, but we, I think we got to back her up because she saved our lives from eating the oatmeal. Not only that, but uh, these are one of the cultists that got killed anyway, so. Hmm. So he was underneath the wagon. Somebody stabbed him, dragged him out, and then they swept the ground. No, the people this morning dragged him out. You think? Oh, okay. When they found he was him. dead under the wagon. Okay. Yeah. All right. He could have been put under there too. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Well, you say stealing from you. Is anything missing? Uh. Well. We, we we haven't really checked. Everything's packed up pretty good. But I'm sure there is something missing. Well, I mean, if you can't prove that there's anything missing, how can you prove that the motive for the murder was theft? Well, I don't know why he did it, but I know he did it. Look at him. No honest man I, looks like that. Are you accusing him because he's an elf? 
Because I take great offense to this. No, I'm accusing him because he's always skulking around our caravan and our camps, acting shifty and shady, hiding in the darkness. I saw him sneaking in the woods the other night, someone says. That was me. <laughs> Shut up. We're, we're not helping. We're this, case, this, this is all business. The case isn't looking too good here. Yeah. I'm so sorry, but we're going to have to go for a plea bargain. Yeah, I don't know, man. So he died at some point over the night. Does, so does anybody remember talking to him? Yesterday or overnight, or do we know that he died? He was killed overnight. I suppose we would. The blood would probably be pretty crusty. Yeah, I saw him when I ended my watch near midnight. The uh, the other cultist says the uh, the merchants are kind of off to the side, you know, kind of huddled together. And at this point, they kind of break up and and they come over and, and they say. They say, good people, surely evil has befallen us this day. And not so long after the disappearance of our wonderful cook. These are evil times. However, as no one saw what was done or by whom, it is not within our power to, to punish anyone for this. We will have to leave it to the gods and trust that they will punish whoever has done this and see that he or she regrets it. Please, we must we must get going. We have many miles to cover today. Go about your business. Agreed. Um, Mastig will approach Theron and be like, you might want to buddy up for the day and just have somebody watching your back. Just saying. Stick with me, Theron. They mess with you. They mess with me. Nevar is gonna gonna talk to take Uriel to the side because he's a wizard, so he must be the smartest of the rest of the group. And be like, so how much you want to bet that was just a ploy to get us kicked off the caravan to stop us from seeing where they're going? I mean, that makes a hell of a lot of sense. I mean, it probably was, but what could we do to counter that? You know. That I don't know. I was wondering if you had any ideas. I did prepare Zone of Truth. I did have one idea, but there's no way this could work. But, I mean, I'm, I don't know. No. I'm genuinely terrified of your idea, but please tell me. <laughs> okay. Okay. He, he's a red mage, right? Yes. And I'm a wizard of sorts. And I've been trying to buddy up to him. Now I've made it very, very, like, open that I would like to be around him more. And I told him that there was somebody on this caravan after him. And now that the cook's disappeared, I was thinking, what if I approach him saying I took care of the cook as if the cook was the one after him? Mm. And so, like, I was protecting him. Or we could get turned. <laughs> I don't we could know, get turned to poison his uh, oatmeal. Because I still got like, and I raised like a little vial, a ton of these, and I just shake the vial full of the little bone pieces. Wow! Da -da 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 -da. Wait, who's that? Sorry, my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if your phone's going to ring, let it be funky. That's what I say. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I, I'm either way, a piece of me deep down wants to offer my sword to him just to see where it goes. If he denies me, he denies pretty me. pretty risky. Maybe we should get Mastig to cast that, that spell that he knows that lets him know. Uh, Half what's the, one? the one that he used. The one that he used to let us know if it was a good idea if we should leave the Augur. caravan. Augur. That spell. We should have him cast that spell before you do it. 
Okay, so like we go out and we drag oh. Matt Stick into the conversation. Yeah. And we uh, catch him up and cast Augury. Okay. Augury? You got it. So out of my out of my haversack, I pull out the dwarven rune stones. Uh, okay. What question are we asking? Um, how should we word it, Nirvana? Not 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 Nirvana. Nirvana. <laughs> <laughs> um, it has to be pretty specific, and it's something we're going to be doing in the next thirty minutes. Uriel is going to say he took out the cook because the cook was a threat to the red mage um in an effort to get closer okay so is it a good idea to lie to the red mage doesn't seem well well, obviously it's not a good idea (laughs) but will that lead to good or bad results is really what it tells us or it might say both and it might say neither so um does that does that kind of sum up what we're asking? No. Kinda, kinda. Um. Will. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Anybody else got an idea how to word this? Make it. I I'm not in the conversation, and Uthgrim would not know. Oh. Hmm. Well, we'll give. Mm-hmm. Will the outcome be in our favor? Will it accom- may- Maybe will it accomplish what we want to accomplish? Well, it doesn't really give you like a yes or no. You cast the bones and or cast the rune stones, and then it tells you whether the the results of a specific course of action will lead to good results or bad results. So basically, you describe a course of action, and then you find out whether it'll be favorable results for you or not. I think it's kind of how I read it. Is that right, Lex? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, basically, so, it's telling you if the outcome will be good or bad. So mm-hmm. obviously, yeah. it's good if it's in our favor, and bad if it isn't. So right, right. I think I think I think the description is well enough. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's I'll I'll phrase that, uh, you know, and uh, cast the bones. I have it prepared as a ritual, so it doesn't take a spell slot or anything, but it does take ten minutes. <clears throat> okay, and and you're asking about the whole trying to fool Asbara, yeah. right? Right. If, ah, you know, we'll, join him. Yeah, if we undertake, if Uriel undertakes the action of telling Asbara that got rid of the cook will telling us bar that lead to good results or bad results oh mighty clank it in uh you get an answer of whoa uh clank it in says this would be this would lead to bad results and he's usually not he's usually a lot more vague <laughs> <clears throat> If Klingadin well, says don't do it, I'm inclined to trust Klingadin. He's brought us Mastig, hasn't he? <laughs> well, and Mastig has definitely saved our tails. Thank you for the compliment. Very, very kind. Should we do one? Want to try another one? You want to try it again? Let's sort of uh, come up with a different plan of action and see if that'll work better. I think... I've had my mic muted. How long? Awesome. I love that. <laughs> Cool. Tyvel is massively and thinks if 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 Uriel bugs the red mage, Tyvel just thinks it's the dumbest possible decision at this point. Well, it's a good job that that we didn't include Tyvel in this conversation. Then, no offense. What's Tyvel doing? I thought he was with you guys. Awesome. No, Navara pulled Navara pulled Uriel to the side, and then they decided to include Mastig to see if this was a good idea. Think probably, if Klinga didn't think it was a good idea. Five the voices of reason be damned. Uthgrim and Thurin, because Uthgrim's kind of like buddied up to Thurin to like guard him, and he'd want to have Five close if he, <laughs> if he, if he'd stand to be near. Yeah. A terrible, yeah, man. brutal murderer. A couple of murderers. <laughs> 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 
I'm sure Thurin is not stealing stuff all the time when we're not noticing in slash W's between him and Lex. I'm <laughs> sure that never happens. Never. Even but though I watched it. one of the old episodes and that was in fact what was happening. <laughs> But I'm not going to metagame that. <laughs> Uriel will probably point, you know, Nevera, I think we could pull it off if I just had you guys backing me up. You know? Um, we could at this point, Nevera would would explain her theory to Mastig about how that was uh, just a ploy by the cultists. They were just killing some non-important person to uh, implicate us. Mm -hmm. it, to get us off of the car kicked off the caravan, so that way, uh, it was pretty quick how they how they blamed, sort of, us. Although I don't know if we've have we really. I think at this point they know we're pretty much a group, right? I mean, we all eat breakfast together every day, and <laughs> well, I mean, it's not even that. It's every time there's an actual issue, yeah. our group immediately launches into action and fights as a fairly formed unit. Yeah, Which implies that we fought stars. together before. <laughs> yeah. Somebody else just watch. You know, Navera, if they're doing these things to themselves, then maybe we should get them caught in the act. And that will just deflect everything onto them. That That's what we need to do. That's how we can counter it. Just get them caught in the act. I'd love to do some zone of truth on these people. Just kind of see if I can get the camp, especially the people who accused us, and if we can wrangle the cultists in uh, Zone of Truth lasts for 10 minutes. And Maybe. They, they know they're in a Zone of Truth, and I know they can choose not to answer, but I know. What, how does it work? Um, okay. They have to make a charisma save. And if they don't make the save, they're unable to lie. They can choose not to answer, but they cannot lie. I know if they saved or not. And they know they're in a zone of truth. So it's kind of... I can every... persuade them to answer, even if you don't. Even if your spell doesn't work to make them answer, too. So... Sounds like a I'm one, sure one, if one we... Maybe we should ask the merchants for a, uh, a little bit of time now to question some people to see if we can get to the bottom of this to come to a more peaceful resolution with everybody here it with everybody so that way they uh they feel better about it you know we can even even make a show of questioning Thurin you know yeah obviously he cuz i don't think he did it yeah i don't think he did it but to make right. sure, you should probably. Why don't you go ask him well, like, nobody should privately with nobody else around while room. I'm convincing the uh, the caravan, the merchants, to give us this time? Yeah? Sure. Uh, Zone of Truth is not Never a miracle. So I, could only, I could only conceivably cast it three times in a row. So, but yeah, no problem. Um, I, I think it would be good to kind of find one of the caravan one of the leaders of one of the carts who's uh um like maybe held in higher esteem than the other ones and see if we can get him to submit to the zone of truth so he knows it's real and then ask thurin and then that way we can establish that thurin didn't do it and then we can start asking other people if they want to how does that sound reasonable or am i getting i don't want to yeah. drive the story to a halt here either but yeah, I'll go talk to the to the merchants, see if we can get a, a brief day of per proceeding for long enough to maybe come to a conclusion on this. Meanwhile, you start figuring out who else might need to be questioned besides Thurin. Yeah, I'd like to start with the two people that accused us, especially the lady who accused us first. Those two, yeah. and ask, ask Glimmer silver gleam gleam silver gleam silver ask her if she has any suggestions for who we should uh question she seems to watch everything or if she did it i'd like to get her in the zone of truth this is true the circle of trust <laughs> my eyes are on you fucker 
I'm watching you. <laughs> okay. So Well, you guys do realize that at this point, like as far as everybody else is concerned, it's kind of like nobody I'm not gonna say nobody cares anymore, but they're not like pursuing it anymore because because the leaders basically said that the gods would would punish them so no one's i mean the cultists are all glaring at you guys but everybody else is kind of you you get the feeling that other than the cultists people really don't think any of you did it because you guys have like saved their asses a few times now so most of the people in the caravan actually like you guys it's just the cultists that don't Probably because they know you're following them. <laughs> yeah, how did our cover get blown? The whole going out, snapping to action, and snapping into fighting as a group kind of implies that we've all fought together before. And also, you know, remember, you guys actually recognize some of them from the camp. So, you know, it's possible they recognized you too. Right. And we all spooned with each other in a big daisy chain. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of cool too. The rules of the road, man. That's right. Yeah. I claim little as <laughs> spoon. Selfish. <laughs> Selfish. And when, when Uriel starts wiggling, that means the spoon ends turn into four. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. <laughs> okay then. Um So I mean I I'm not I'm was... not you guys can feel free to do an investigation, but I just wanted to make sure that you knew that like people aren't really giving you a hard time about it anymore, other than the cultists. Navarro would still go up to the uh, to the merchants and propose in in the interest of peace among the caravan. I don't actually. How far is it until Waterdeep? Uh, you guys are very close. It is two more days at this point. You can probably see the glow of Waterdeep in the distance at night at this point. Oh, that's that's tough. Because as much as Naivara would want to present this as being in the interest of peace on the caravan, caravan's not going to last long enough for anybody to really care enough. That's Oh, well. So Tyvol, Thurin, and Uthgrim are kind of all in the same the same area. They're kind of standing around each other. Yeah, they're chatting a little bit about the whole situation. Uthgrim mostly wants to stay close to Thurin in case anybody tries anything. Okay. Um, do you think the caravan masters would allow us to do this little zone of truth deal? Or would they find it extremely annoying and just want to get on the road? I kind of like the idea of it. I think it's kind of a I think we it's could clever. We could learn something, and I'm sharing this with Thurin and Ty. I go up to Thurin, Tyvo, and Uthgrim and kind of want to get their input on it too. Thurin, would you be willing to go into the? Nope. Even said willing. willing. Yeah, fuck, I'm all. No. Okay, so I guess Navara is while Mastig is going to talk to Uthgrim, Thurin, and Tyvo about what's going on. Navara is uh, going before the. Um, merchants to present their idea um, in the interest of preserving peace on the caravan for the last few days of the journey, we'd like to perform a uh, a little investigation into what happened, maybe maybe put us off by like 20 minutes starting to uh, to show that we didn't do it, but we do want to find out who killed their friend, to so maybe make them less hostile and less likely to attack somebody else or one of us in the meantime because i'd hate to see one of us die in the last few days getting to water deep because they think they've been wronged and nobody has looked into what they've uh what they've clearly thought was a problem they say well if if you think that's necessary and it doesn't delay us too long 20 minutes 30 minutes tops Very well. Good luck. <laughs> uh, uh, 
uh, Uthgrim, you can choose not to answer. And I'm the only person who knows if you make your charisma save or not. So if you don't make your charisma save, you can just not answer. But if you resist it, you can lie. But then I would know, I think. Let me check. I will not lie, but that magic. All right. Even saying nothing does not sit well with me. Okay. On a failed save, the creature can't speak a deliberate lie while in the radius. So, you know, lawyer that however you will. Um, <laughs> Unfortunately, Uthgrim's not the lawyer. <laughs> um, you are aware of the spell. You can avoid answering questions to which you would normally respond with a lie. Such a creature can be evasive in its answers as long as it remains within the boundaries of the truth. So let's just hope they don't ask about the cook. Let's just say that. <laughs> that probably would be bad. But we, we're putting up, we're planning on putting third in there anyway. And but if they ask him, will he not have to tell the truth? I mean, so be it, Master, if that's what it is, I'll pay the price. So. Thurin, do you think you can kind of dance around the truth? Can you do a little dance with the truth? I have confidence that you can. I feel like you could. Have you guys read the uh, Wheel of Time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was I, gonna... I just kind of like play with the truth. Yeah, yeah. I was like, you could totally do some Aes Sedai stuff here where what you technically say is true, but it leads people to thinking you said things that you didn't really say oh, man. <laughs> that like, may not be true. <laughs> me as Steve, I could do that pretty well. It, like, Uthgrim's not subtle enough. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> I'll, I'll bet Thurin could pull it off, though. He's what kind pretty... of was it? Charisma. Man, that's not my strong suit. <laughs> Is that your Don't worry, stat? I got you back. <laughs> you, you, can, you can be a little bit inspired as long as you can play the part of the... Uh... I have we'll, inspiration. We'll have... We'll have... We'll direct the questions toward the guy. We'll direct them away from the cook. So it, pro it probably won't come up. <laughs> so be it. If it does, I'm prepared to pay the price. All right, can, and uh, I'm, if Mastic hasn't done so already, Navarra is going to ask the, the gnome chick privately if she knows anyone we should question in this question in this uh, interrogation. She says, well, I imagine all of the cultists are guilty of something i'm not sure yeah. uh i don't know I'm, I'm not sure if questioning them is a good idea though Why? kind of uh kind of letting them know that we're investigating them i well, think we'd learn more if if they're not on their guard well more this was supposed to be about specifically about the guy who was killed and a show of investigating that in particular as a sort of good faith that you know whatever oh i i understand but but we know that they're they're up to no good so i i think if you try to get them to answer questions in the zone of truth they're not going to be very happy about that even if you are supposedly doing it to help them out but we'll Did still you kill the guy? Him. Me? You're just as shifty as Thurin is at times. <laughs> she laughs. I suppose that's true. You want to try the polygraph, Fokker? <laughs> oh, man. See? There you go. Doesn't you ask... didn't answer the question. That's, like, that's yeah. exactly how you duck a question. I'd like to... Would she be willing to step into the zone of truth? Uh, instantly, instantly McCarthy hearing... It's just a red scare now. I just want to get everybody in the zone of truth. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you, you're you asking Jamna if she'll go yeah. in the zone of truth? Yeah. Just kind of as a show of good faith. Personally, I'm just asking her if she did it. That we're not, you know, just going after the cultists. But if Naivara is just going to straight up ask her, that's fine, too. She says, uh, between me and you, and she lowers her voice, uh, if you bring me into your zone of truth, it's just going to create problems for everyone. Mm 
well beyond this particular situation. <laughs> That's not what I asked. I asked if you did it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who did it. She says. Could have I been one of the other that. cultists. Do I know if she's lying with a 13? Probably not. Uh, let me see. I have a pretty good insight check also. I don't want to just start throwing out. Do I know if she's lying? lying? Are you in this conversation? Why is everybody... I, I don't understand why everybody was going up to interrogate her at once. This makes no sense. Especially no, since we don't I want to implicate her. Uh, no, Naivari, you, you don't think she's lying. I'm not interrogating. I'm just listening. Hmm. Okay. Should we pursue this? At this point, Navarro would just be like, it's it's up to you. I I personally don't care if he gets anything. I just don't. They're probably going to attack us anyway, so making a show of uh. Yes, it doesn't seem to me. This doesn't really seem worth it. There's much value in pursuing this anymore. I feel like there's a lot of information we could get out of this, but we know there. I don't want to be the only one Bastard. trying to do this. We'll have to cut the sword eventually. <clears throat> but I like Zone of Truth. I've never been able to cast Zone of Truth so far. I want to force people to tell the truth. But <laughs> if nobody else wants to do it, I'm, I'm fine. We could just move on. I don't want to drag the story to a halt either. From a, from a, I hate to say it, but from a metagame perspective, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure that it's going to take us anywhere. If you want any comfort that way, like I, at this point, I, I kind of think like, you try to zone a truth a bunch of cultists, on the pretense that, that's somehow to help them. I, I don't see that heading in a positive direction. Yeah. Well, I don't think I, I don't feel like our motivation is to really try to make them feel like we're helping them. Our motivation is just to try to clear Thurin. You know, that's why I was saying if we got if we got somebody who was kind of like the leader of the caravan to come in there to well, know that the Thorin Zone of Truth yeah. is actually active, and then right. to have Thurin come in and say he didn't do it, that would help kind of clear his name. That's kind of what I was. I, I agree, and I I actually think it's super clever. Um, but I think. Why say in a metagame perspective? I think Lex is kind of sending us the signals that these guys don't really care if Thurin's guilty anyways. Yeah. Well, you you do have the strong sense that the cultists are the only ones that really suspect him. Like, you guys have earned enough respect from the other people in the caravan that, that you guys saying he didn't do it is enough for most of the people. And they also, the other people in the caravan don't really like the cultists either. Like they, they don't really interact with the other people, you know, they're all kind of standoffish and, um, rude. Yeah. So basically in this particular battle of he said, she said, they're inclined to believe us because we seem right. like the more upstanding people. Right. And the cultists, even if we do this, they're still going to try to pin it on third anyway. So it's not going to really, it's not going to change. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. But it is one action to cast Zone of Truth, so you guys, you know, keep your eyes open. I might be Zone of Truthing you. <laughs> you catch us like around, right. around the dinner table. Exactly. So how's my cooking, Zone of Truth? <laughs> <laughs> Way better since Nivar got involved. What do you really <laughs> think of those shoes? <laughs> so what do you really think of Clangin' in Zone of Truth? <clears throat> <laughs> hey, you've right. already heard what Navarro thinks of playing it in. Yeah, she's pretty down. That's cool. We'll uh, we'll get you the um, we'll get you the club membership. We'll get you a subscription to the newsletter. The Clang It In Fitness Club. Yes, that'll be. Too easy. <laughs> All right, so you guys spend another two uneventful days on on the caravan. Um, other than, you know, the cultists glaring at you. But honestly, they've been glaring at you kind of the whole time. But 
Now they're just glaring at you more. And uh, after his his brief, you know, <laughs> attempt to smooth things over, Asbara resumes uh, being quiet and staying to himself on the one cultist wagon. And uh, Jamna kind of hangs out with you guys from time to time during that two days. And uh, then you arrive in Waterdeep. And actually, I found a cool picture Yay. of Waterdeep. I'm going to Skullport. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's, that's so nice. Pretty. Yeah, that's a really cool, cool picture. So Waterdeep, I don't know if it's the biggest city in Forgotten Realms, but it's one of them. If it's not the biggest, you can pretty much find anything here. There are dozens upon dozens upon dozens of taverns and things like that. Um, there are quite a few temples to various deities. Um, and there's also, here's a map. It's not super detailed, but kind of shows how it's laid out. I want to go. Oh, where's go my to, library? Crime scene sounds like an awesome bar. <laughs> <laughs> There's wait. Biggest question: Is there a fucking pine? No, not yet. You guys should put one there. You got to franchise that. Stuff. <laughs> Ivara fully expects there to be a fucking pint in this town eventually because you guys have been talking about it nonstop. This is where her <laughs> library is. Where, uh, what are the co- what would be the cost of buying a tavern? I mean, what would uh, gold piece wise? <clears throat> uh, it would depend great. on the the size, but probably around fifty thousand, maybe less, maybe more, depending on location and size and okay. how successful it is, or or are you building it from the ground up, or are you buying it from someone? Yeah, so well beyond what we could probably do at this point. Soon, because there's nothing else to spend money on. So <laughs> maybe you can make the down payment on a mortgage. The, the <laughs> only risk is that, you know, like if we buy a tavern and start running it, like I'll probably just stop adventuring because why, why would you? <laughs> you have to roll a new character who does not own a tavern. <laughs> All right. So, um, so you roll into Waterdeep after two months on the road. Uh, the various merchants start dispersing to the city's markets, warehouses, and stables. Um, this is actually technically the point where you guys are paid. I just kind of told you as we went, you know, each Over week. Over the course of the journey, did I manage to make Bade my friend? I think that was... Uh, Sort of, yeah. Yeah, you you guys are buddies now. You you had some ales together, bonded. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, the the people that hired you told you, you know, that they they really, you know, you guys did a great job. You're you uh, are welcome to travel with them anytime. They'd be hi- happy to hire you again. Um. Now, the wagons of the cultists do not seem to be doing what everybody else is doing and like spreading to the to the four winds. Um, instead, they seem to be heading north uh, further into the city. And you see that wanna... Asbara is staying with them. This group doesn't want to take up too much time, but on the last sort of day as, they, as we approach Waterdeep, He'd be asking around a little bit about the cook and whether or not he might have any family in Waterdeep or if anybody knows anything about him. He just feels he feels bad. And Okay. So you're asking, like, the other merchants or? Yeah, like, whoever, like, any other people that work in the caravan, if anybody knows him and where his family's from or anything like that. Yeah, you know, everybody seems like they know him. Uh, you find out that he... Basically, that's like cooking for caravans is what he does. He he just travels back and forth on caravans, and he's been doing it like seemingly forever. Um, no one's ever really heard him talk about family or anything. 
uh, he was a very kind of jovial guy and like really fun to be around, but he was, he was one of those, he was like the perfect bartender. Like he was very good at getting people to talk about themselves. He didn't talk about himself much. Um, nobody Thanks really knows where he came Here, from. Humanize him some more for me, please. <laughs> <laughs> he had a little puppy that he, he raised, uh, that he found in the wild. <laughs> But yeah, nobody knows even necessarily what city he's from originally. Like some people say Waterdeep, some people say Baldur's Gate. Did he have a name? I, I don't want to know. It was Sam it was Malone. Punk. You killed Sam Malone. <laughs> Cheers. Goosegrim's gonna have to do something to uh, to make 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 peace with this. Uh, did he get his name? Is 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 if it's Sam Malone? It's Sam Malone. That's cool. I like it. Uh, sure. His name's Sam Malone. Okay. Awesome. Okay. While well, we're in water deep, we'll <laughs> that. back back to the plot. Uh, Jamna comes up to you guys and she says, "Hey, uh, I'm I'm really keen to to kind of keep an eye on these guys and see see what where they go and what they do with all all that that loot that they've got. Are, are you guys with me? Yeah. Yeah. You still you stay with her. I mean, Tyvo could turn into like a cat and just kind of follow them. I mean, yeah, whatever. Some potential there for sure. So they are, uh, they all seem to be heading north, but they're not all necessarily traveling together. Do you guys just want to like choose some of them to follow or split up and follow as many of them as you can? Or, or how do you want to go about it? I mean, Splitting the party yeah. always seems like dodgy, but but you know there's there's different strengths here, right? Like there's no, no sense in having Mastig try to follow Thurn in a sneaky way, so you could send some stealth people after one group, and then some of us Mastig after another. And Tyvo could go by himself. I mean, what's one cat to one giant city, or one rat, or a small animal? Which I'm cool. sure I've seen. Really, what is the best animal to follow people around in a fantasy city? Probably a cat. cat put it on probably a roof. Cat? Yeah, yeah, there's probably cats yeah. everywhere. Ty Tyvo's totally up for cat form following people. Or maybe animals. like a like a crow or a pigeon. I couldn't. Be, they have fly speeds. Oh, okay. I'd be level late for that. That's stray dog, maybe. Yeah, I mean, a cat's probably good. I mean, they're fast. They can climb. They're stealth. Uh, they're good at stealth and smell. Like if it was a rat, like there's a chance somebody yeah. would try to squat you. Yeah. So yeah. So if you're yeah. a cat, somebody might try to fireball you. Ty will just turn into an adorable like little like tabby with a tiny little green scarf. Um <laughs> you know. Alright, cool. I did uh prepare the sending spell as well, so we now have access to that. Okay, so, so you guys are splitting up? Yeah. Is Never everybody yes? Navarro would suggest she has a library in town somewhere, and we could all meet up there later to collaborate information. Works for me. That'll work. Sounds good. So are you guys splitting What's up entirely, or are some people traveling um, together? You know, you know what books are, Rutherford? Those rectangular things. Sometimes you wipe your ass with them. I've seen well, you do it. Yes, don't tell Navarro, though. <laughs> 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 she lost that paper more than her dead husband. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> sassy. Anyway, there's lots of toilet paper. It's a toilet paper warehouse, really, is what I read. Perfect. She would give you a location. She wouldn't give you, you know, a library somewhere. I've got to shit something fierce. <laughs> 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 I think Waterdeep probably has like street signs and stuff, right? Yeah. Aren't they incorporated yeah. like that? Yeah, I thought so. I think the feeling Oathgrim would just destroy a bathroom too. <laughs> <laughs> like cracks the toilet. <laughs> it's that after caravan poop though. <laughs> Travelers shits. Well, when you're on the road, you got you got to shit quick, right? Because you don't know what's in the woods. <laughs> All right, so so you guys all tail different cultists and and follow them through the city, and you know as you can see from the map, uh, Waterdeep is huge, 
you guys enter um, towards the south part of the city and you travel with these guys pretty much to the northwestern part of the city. Um, so it takes you probably quite a few hours just to, to get through the city. And um, luckily for you guys, they all converge at the same place. So you guys end up hooking back up and like seeing each other like across the way um, as they all take their horses to this large uh, stable. And they, they stable their horses there and, and park their, their wagons there. And there are lots of uh, inns in the area, so it would be very easy to find a place to stay to like keep an eye on them. Yeah, the closest one. <laughs> and so you guys uh, just kind of pick an inn close by that has a good view of, of the stable where they, they left all their stuff. And uh, this place is called the Roaring Dwarf. I can see why we would pick a place with that name. Yeah. And as you walk in, you see the innkeeper, who is, uh, surprise, surprise, a dwarf. Um, and he has this great braided beard. Of course and he, he does. And he's got cool. the, like, the greasy apron and you know the towel yes. over one arm. Cool. He, he walks up to you guys. He goes, greetings, travelers. Greetings to the Roaring Dwarf. What can I oh get for you? Oh, my God, I you? love your beard. <laughs> Thank you. It's taken me many, many years to grow it. Cool. I'll give him the typical dwarf greeting where I bang my axe against whatever his tool happens to be, whatever is A big implement. tankard. He's got cool. like a big metal tankard. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Thanks for welcoming us in. I am Argyll Ironsides, purveyor of this fine establishment. Cool. Do you wish? I'm, Mast I'm Mastic Runheim. These are my uh, companions, traveling companions. We're looking for a place to drink and rest. Oh, then you found it. Shit. No better food or ale anywhere in Waterdeep. <clears throat> and yeah, you guys uh, can get rooms and food and drink. As for a room with the best view to the street. To the street? Mm hmm Are you sure you wouldn't want a view of the of the water, my lord? We have a great uh, no. view on the on the second story. No. Uh, I have some uh, guests meeting me here and I'd like to see them when they come. Uh, of course, my lord. Whatever you say. And he uh, he shows you to your room. I would like to kind of question Argal Ironsides about any okay. kind of information he might have about the uh, uh, cultists. Just kind of way, just kind of, well, there's kind of a lot of activity in the stables next door. Um, you see a lot of people coming and going there. What's up with that? Okay. Um, so he he's kind of uh, hanging out at the bar, like kind of, wiping down the bar, pouring drinks for people. So you, you sit down and, and you start talking to him and he actually uh, brings over like this big jug of dwarven made ale and like pours you a big mug of it and pours one for himself. And yeah, cool. uh, he, he tells you that the, the stable next door, um, they, I mean, it's, it's a huge stable. Um, they do a lot of business with people from caravans uh, because they have secure places where they can keep their their wagons and stuff. Um, and also just anybody else that needs a horse stabled. You know, he has his own small stable for people staying at the inn. But uh, this is uh, one of the, the kind of main streets that go through the through the town and then lead beyond to the north. So a lot of people that are heading north uh we'll we'll use that stable um do you do you say anything about the cult or are you keeping that on the down low um, let me get an insight check okay i just want to see if this guy while he's talking about these stables if there's anything i pick up odd or off or okay it's just strictly a uh whoa and yeah 
Damn. I got a good, pretty good read on this guy. Um, he, he seems, you know, pretty, pretty straightforward. Like a lot of dwarves are, you know, what you see is what you get. Um, is he withholding anything about the cultists or no, no. Okay. No. You, you do sense, uh, that there's something, uh, kind of bothering him. And although he's kind of putting off this facade of being like very friendly and jovial that, um, he's actually troubled about something and he seems very tired. Hmm. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll say, uh, say Argo, uh, I notice your eyes are kind of half lidded there. Uh, uh, what's, what's keep, what's making you so fatigued these days? You're working too hard or he life, says, life working over too hard. <laughs> he, he says, well, it's a, it's a combination of working too hard and not doing the right kind of work. Uh, don't don't get me wrong uh the the roaring dwarf does does great and i i love meeting people and cooking and serving drinks and things like that but uh lately i've i've really been missing uh missing my people and i've uh i've been thinking seriously about about go, going back to the the dwarven hold where i grew up and being being among dwarves again but uh i I can't do it until I until I find someone to take this place over. I haven't been able to find a buyer. Times are times are hard. Really? How much are you asking for the place? He he kind of looks around and and he he lowers his voice, and he says uh, he says, "Well, I I was really hoping to get twenty thousand for it, but I'm I'm to the point now. I think I'd take less if I found the right person. Mm. I'm just sick of city life, you know." It wears on you after a while. It does. You need to get back underground with the rocks and and so on. It's good to know. <laughs> well, thanks, sir. And I'll uh, I'll float him a, a gold. Okay. And, wow. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No, you do you do a great job here, Argo. I try. And then, as he after he walks away, and Uthgrim returns from the privy. Ne Navarro wants to, ask, wants to touch him Sweating. and ask him. Great shitter. <laughs> what, Chrissy? Navarro wants to catch him and ask him if he can send for an emissary from uh, the library to come meet her. Uh, yeah, you, you want like a messenger or? Yeah, she, like just like a messenger to go get somebody from the library to come meet with her somebody who's currently left in charge of it because um the way i imagined it worked is she had somebody who was there taking care of the place and wanted somebody to come talk to her about it while okay. she's in town okay uh yeah yeah he he has someone he can send to do that I will then tell Uthgrim what Argol told me, that he's looking to sell this place, asking 20000 but he said he'd come down if, it, if we had the right buyer. So I know you want to get into the uh, high, fast-paced world of tavern ownership. I figured I'd spread along. It would be nice. It would be nice. I don't think I have enough, though. Not even close. Yeah, I don't think all of us together have enough, but... Does it seem like a pretty nice place, the Roaring Dwarf? Yeah, um, it's not like super, super upscale, but it's decent size. They have, uh, it's an inn and a tavern, so they have rooms where people can stay and um, cool. everything's in good repair. Dwarves aren't much for interior decorating, but. Ah, <laughs> Booth Grimm starts thinking about the nice uh, like curtains he could sell <laughs> tattered curtains and rocks for chairs I could use some landscaping <laughs> beer garden that's what it needs yeah there you go see we've got you know upholstery we can open like a little cobbler's corner for mastig cobbler's corner yeah be great like a stand instead of your shoe shine just get them straight redone 
Thurn could probably hook us up with some money lenders. Yeah. Definitely shady money lenders. <laughs> but... <laughs> Thurn will have the gambling table going. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of stalled there. Where, where are we at? Is something happening? Oh, I'm I'm looking uh, something no. up. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, Uthgrim, uh, for... is interested but doesn't have the money. It's good to know, though. I guess for oh, RP yeah. purposes, um, Uriel would be just like staking out the tavern from like a desk. He moves right in front of that window, and all he's doing for like the time there's you know writing a chart of who goes in when and when they leave and okay cool repeats and all that. cool with a big pitcher of beer with them it doesn't want to get too <laughs> oh, okay. well, let's go. i was like man uriel is just working while we're in a tavern this is so bizarre <laughs> okay um so so later that night uh Nivara someone from the from the library comes to visit you uh it's a man you recognize he's he's like the the chief librarian there his name is spencer he's got spectacles of course what he's, race is he he's human I want to okay he, he says my lady it's it's been a long time well, I've been looking for Talia, as you know. I just figured while I was uh, in town, I'd see if maybe she came to her senses and came home, or... Uh, and just how the place was faring without me. He says, no, we uh, we haven't heard from her. We, we did get a, a fairly sizable donation of books not too long ago. Uh, a noble, uh, a noble woman had died. Uh huh. Cool. Hello, books. Anything interesting? Anything particularly interesting? Anything about you, Matt? No. Um, it's mostly about the the noble families in the area. Pretty dry stuff, actually. Book about Tiamat would be a much more interesting read. I'd imagine. Maybe I'll write one one day. You should. Do you know much about Tiamat? Uh, I know quite a bit about Tiamat, and oh. I'm learning more every day. Wow. You're not a... He lowers his voice a, a follower, are you? No. Oh, of course not. What am I thinking? No, but uh, I had heard that they were the ones who took Talia, so that's why I'm learning more every day. Oh dear, that's horrible. Hopefully, she yes. she got away from him. She's Hopefully. pretty smart. So you guys talk about books. Pretty much. <laughs> he he asked you how long you're you're gonna be staying in the city. Um That's a good question. Is Mastig or anyone else actually around? Probably. Yeah. We agreed to meet up at I don't know, I assumed we had a certain time in mind. <clears throat> totally stones out while you talk about books though he's not paying to anything <laughs> oh no um i kind of figured she was just having this conversation somewhere and you know they were just somewhere else in the bar drinking and doing mastig and Uthgrim and company things <laughs> and Uriel things no you're going to say real things yeah you know i love it <laughs> she'd she'd probably ask mastig if he had any idea if we were just staying for the night or if we'd be here longer. I think this might be kind of a good, I mean, I don't know how close it is in relation to the other points of interest, 
But as far as our quest to keep an eye on the cultists, this might be the best place to stay. Um, it's closest. And I have a really good vibe about the owner. I think he's clean. <laughs> and uh, I, I think this will work out. So unless you have another idea. Oh, no, I'm I'm all for that. I was just, uh, just talking to my friend here, and he was wondering. Yeah. If no, we're we'll, going to be here a while. Yep, this would be the place. To, to, if you're looking to find us, this would be the place. And Uriel, you at this point have noticed that the cultists have been getting rooms at the various inns kind of around this square. And um, actually, a couple of them came in here, and they saw you guys and turned around and left. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Do I like see any of those people... Um, as I'm having the conversation, the ones that come in here, the see, see, see various members of our party in the, you know, lobby area of the bar and leave. No, that probably happened earlier. This guy comes fairly okay. late. Okay. Like after dark. Does our group have like regular meetings to check up? Like, all right, everybody meet up at nine. So we know that everybody's not fucked, you know? <laughs> <laughs> No, but that's a good Wait. idea. <laughs> Let me consult my wrist sundial. This is not a clock. Oh, wait, I'm inside. It doesn't work. No, that them totally makes sense, but we don't do that stuff. So, um, The bar has a water clock of, on the mantle. So you actually can tell time here. <laughs> wow, this place just sells itself. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Does the water clock come with the bar? <laughs> Individually, Uriel would definitely suggest the idea. And at this point, he would suggest they're 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 like seeing us, and they recognize us instantly. So we need to like change clothes and how we look dramatically. If you're suggesting I get rid of this shirt again, boy, <laughs> I, coming. I, I have to get rid of my nice coat I paid a lot for. Yeah, the well, smoke is coming from a mile away. <laughs> well, you, you guys traveled together for like two months, so it's going to yeah, take this... some serious disguising to, to fool them. Shaving beards, growing beards. <laughs> We're at, we have to really Changing your up. very species. <laughs> yeah. There's some cursed item that we could use. There'll be no beard shaving. If only we all had hat of disguises. So true. Are they all together, or are they going different ways? They're changing. They're all going to different ends. Perhaps we could catch one or two alone and ask them a few questions. And he cracks his knuckles. That is an important topic in the other direction. That if we happen to be traveling through the city, um, it would be best that, unless we were taking all. Um, precautions to be secretive uh, that we do not get jumped in the crowds or in the alleyways. I will make a good point. Because while some of us may be able to break away, you know, five individuals with clubs surrounding the fair wizard or maybe the bard, um, you know, might not turn out the best. <laughs> Especially if they have agents here that could negate magic. I definitely will not feel safe as long as we're in water deep. Tyvel doesn't Tyvel's like the right. big city? <laughs> Surprise! Is nice Shocking. In water deep? What's that, Kyle? Is there a nice garden in water deep? Oh, I'm sure there's many gardens. I mean, like, it stays long enough, there sure will be. This is like the New York <laughs> of <Yeah>. Faerun. <laughs> Well, has, has I don't even know if we're in the same universe. Has the spell plague happened, or is that like not a thing that happens? In I every think that version? I think that has happened. Yeah. Okay, so Neverwinter is a bigger deal than Waterdeep nowadays. Oh, is it? Yeah, because Waterdeep was the city of splendor until the spell plague, and then Neverwinter became the crown of the north or whatever. Hmm. That's where all the really cool people hang out. So this is like the Detroit. Oh, come on, man. Yeah, but I mean, Waterdeep didn't get smaller. 
right? Yeah, but it got a lot less like neat. Like Waterdeep has all, or Neverwinter has all the neat stuff nowadays. Ah, uh, I see. With Never Ember, well, I mean, Neverwinter is sort of owned by Waterdeep because Lord Never Ember is also the Lord Protectorate of one of the people of Waterdeep or whatever. However, the politics work or crazy nonsense that goes on. Oh. You always suggest that him and Tybo two are one garden and they did spin there. Yeah, Tybo's totally up for garden tours. Yeah. Well, at this point, it's it's getting fairly late, like it's after dark. So I don't know if you want to go to the gardens at night. No, no night gardens. I mean, it's if we're calling it New York, does it have like Madison Square? That's in New York, right? Or I, do I have no idea what I'm talking about? I just meant that it's like a really, yeah. <laughs> really big city where you can find yeah, anything. I, I was just <laughs> jokes. Yeah, Tyvon wants to turn in. He's a, he's a very. Uh, it was Grim. Your or Steve. Your my muted. Or... Oh, <laughs> plug it in. Rio will do his best to try to watch the. Uh stable for as long as he can before he just passes out <laughs> okay you guys hear me now yes okay yeah. i was just trying to ask what the uh room situation was like like do we all have separate rooms or do we have individual rooms it's up to you guys i kind of think separate rooms might be a bit um more risky yeah I mean, how big is this place? Would it have six plus rooms? Oh yeah, yeah, it's a pretty good size. It has a whole second story that's just all rooms. Mm. Of course, my bar. She can have her own room, but perhaps the others of us uh, should bunk up. Yeah, Ariel demands his idea. own room. Ariel demands his own room. Whereas Navarra is not too particular about having her own room because it's not like she hasn't been on the road with y'all for two months yeah. as it is. I don't think anyone's going to try to like jump her or something. But what, what's, yeah. once the door closes, it becomes somehow somehow more scandalous. <laughs> <laughs> this room's a very conservative part. I guess, yeah. <laughs> no neckline, everything below the knee. <laughs> That's right. Um, maybe we should set up like kind of a watch on uh the cultists to make sure they're not um, you know <clears throat> in the middle of the night hauling off you know several wagon loads of dragon eggs or anything well uh uriel got that good room facing the street one of us can stay up in there with him yeah that could be like the watch room right um and if people and if somebody is not too particular they can sleep in there also <laughs> That's the party all night room. <laughs> Theron, you should totally try and find out what's in their wagons. Like, actually, specifically, what's in their wagons. It might be a bit If you too get a dangerous. chance. It might be a bit too dangerous, Navarra. I don't think you can do it. Would a cat be able to do it? Yet again, I... city cats. <laughs> Theron accepts Seth Grum's challenge. <laughs> Don't they, I mean, are you sure that dragon cultists don't eat cats? I mean, I seem feel like a cat, you're kind of, you might be setting yourself up as like a food source to somebody in the city. I don't know. Just he saying. might be setting himself up as a food source to a dog. Yeah. yeah. It would be terrifying for that dog, though. <laughs> when he gets a mouthful of cat that turns into a mouthful of human or bear. <laughs> well, not so much bear, but we get one. Oh, yeah, you could always just turn yeah. it back into yourself. So, yeah, yeah I guess you're covered. It's not like, you know, Sounds like a legit plan. Um, to, there could be a, there could be whole, like, like comic book series of Tyvel's adventures while everybody else is doing <laughs> the main story. <laughs> Tyvel's adventures as a cat in Waterdeep yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> so, all of those, you know, comic uh, strip artists in the crowd, please. Yeah, yeah that's right. It's right. got all like it's it's open source. Yeah, not, fantasy. Yeah. You're not locking down rights yet. Lex might be. I don't know. What's in the <laughs> <laughs> Bottom beard is yeah. very much getting. Uh, yeah, trademark yeah. pending on that. 
Bible could always turn to a frog and go in. Yeah, I mean, we got frogs, cats, rats, mice. Why doesn't? Why don't uh, Thurn and Tyvel kind of back each other up and yeah do that thing? I mean, Tyvel could activate rat mode, sit on Thurn's shoulder, and then just kind of, <laughs> you know, that could work. <laughs> oh my god! I just I imagined mean, a rat with like the teeniest, yeah, tiniest scar. <laughs> <little scarf. laughs> oh my gosh! So yeah. Are we in a Disney movie now? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, dire wolf form. Exactly. Tyvel goes west. <laughs> Great reference. Oh, yeah. Tyvel's like on, on Thurin's uh, head, yeah. pulling yeah. on his hair, <laughs> steering him. Oh, yeah, like Ratatouille. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's, let's see some stealth checks from... Uh, sure. The rogue and the rat or cat, whichever whichever um, one you're would doing. Would the rat have to do a stealth check if he's on my shoulder or head? No, not if he's riding on yeah. your shoulder. Yeah, I'm rat form, I guess, and I'm like hiding in like his like in his coat or whatever whatever the freaking elf dude wears. Okay, becomes relevant for me to hide in, and then you know he's dressed like completely his... in spandex, yeah. so it's I'm, hard I'm, to I'm find. His, <laughs> I'm his pocket spy. <laughs> he just ha, pocket spy. <laughs> Spellcasting rat. <laughs> Level eighteen, I could be a spellcasting rat. Okay. Terrifying. All right, so you sneak well, over to the inspiration on that. Okay. Not good Not enough. That's good enough. <laughs> How about a twenty-four? Okay, it works for me. <laughs> so you you sneak over to the stable. Um, you're going to have to, uh, if, if you want to check in the wagons, you're going to have to get through some, some doors. They're all locked down. They have like little, uh, I don't know, almost like garages for the wagons that lock. Thieves tools. <laughs> I mean, okay. Unless there's like a small opening that rat form could go and unlock on the other side. If it's like latched on the other side. Um, they're, they're pretty well sealed. All right, as my, um, I will use, I don't know if it'll matter if we get into combat or anything, but I think it would. My cunning action, which is a bonus action to use my thieves tools. Okay. Um, actually, I'm not a rat. I'm a spider. So I hope that doesn't creep you out. <laughs> Creeps me out. <laughs> I'm a spider wearing a tiny green scarf. Please try not to. How, how many hit points do you have in that form? Oh, like yeah. one? One. I have a single hit point. <laughs> Thurn's like. Oh, <laughs> 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 so right, you let's... hit me, and then I just become massive under your head as I turn back into a dude. All right, let's see your. 28. Wow, okay. Yeah, you, you pop that lock, no problem. Uh, you get inside. You see one of the one of the wagons. You recognize it with the uh, with the tarp fastened down around it. So you you start looking inside, and you know it's filled with crates. So you have to you know open one of the crates to see what's in the crate. And you I see have a crowbar. <laughs> awesome. You you see just all kinds of like loot. Um, obviously stolen from homes. Everything from like fairly nice like silverware and drinking vessels and stuff like that to like what looked to be things that came off of people's little personal shrines, like little statues of deities and, and stuff like that. Just all kinds of random stuff. All of it That's looks valuable. valuable. Yeah. It all looks like it's, you know, worth at least something. Theron's got to take some of it. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what. He's just going to take some of it. Okay. So you just start filling your pockets with random bits of jewelry and. No, it, he won't take too long, just a few items. Okay. A spider bull sits and judges you. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there. What else can I see? I'm a tighter. Um, th there's just one wagon in this one stall. Um, okay. but are you going to open more than one crate? Um, I 
No, I think um I'd head to a different room. Okay. So you, uh, we won't worry about like what specifically you get, but you get 89 gold pieces worth of valuables that I'll were stolen off of, from people's homes. Poor hey, people. So you got to pay to keep the title, the, 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 the tighter quiet. <laughs> the tighter. <laughs> yes. I'm a, I'm a little, yes. A little spider with the That's, that's I'm a, pretty good. I'm absolutely adorable. <laughs> So is your scarf spider silk? Yeah. <laughs> so, so you're going to check out another wagon, Thurin? Yeah. All right. I'm not going to worry about having you roll to pick the lock because what, what is your bonus anyway? Uh, a nine. Okay. Yeah. So even if you rolled a two, you would probably be able to pick these locks. And if not, you can always <laughs> just try again. And Thurin, you know, under Tyvel's... Well, no, I guess I really can't do much as Tyvel that I could tell Thurn. So, yeah, Tyvel just can randomly hiss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's you you uh, you go check out another wagon, and it's it's the same kind of thing. It's filled with, with loot. More loot. Yep. He just comes back, and he's like twice the size he was originally. <laughs> Just He's clean. just got so much loot and <laughs> coins just everybody just <laughs> How long have they been gone? I guess we didn't establish this first, but I would probably cast a sending spell at a certain point just to check up on them. Okay. Well, we'd have say. to be less than two hours. Right. Are you just searching the two wagons or are you gonna search more? One more. Okay. So yeah, Just you more. find the the same kind of stuff. So they they're probably gone less than an hour, if he's just then doing three. After wagons. the third one, they'd head back. Okay. Cool. Yeah, nobody uh, nobody notices you. Nice. And you have some loot. <laughs> Did you lock up after you uh, you left? Um. That's what Tyvel, he would have Hold danced on. on the locks and hissed. <laughs> we just waited until he came back and be like, what the hell? All right, so yes, I did. Okay. We gotta, we gotta like work out a system. One bark or one hiss or whatever for no. <laughs> two for yes, three for try to figure something out, nerd. I think your Instagram handle is barking spiders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I put the locks back on and lock them back up. Okay, cool. So, did you find out anything about any intel on um, where they're going or anything? I I didn't see. All I saw was loot, loot, and more loot. Dollar signs, baby. Dollar signs. <laughs> did you, <laughs> we don't see any in the tavern. <laughs> yeah, right. Ever figure out the stakeout times? Like, no, we never spelled it out. Yeah. But yeah, Tyvo would report that, you know, he, didn't, he was just like someone had locked up and went on winter vacation. But there wasn't any manifests or nothing to help kind of tell us where they're going or, because that's what we're trying to figure out now, right? Yeah. Okay. Like where they're going. And... I mean, could we have gauged like, like how much assets they have there. Like say, you know, they're currently pulling so much weight of gold or in, in a sense, like what they're buying power with all this crap is. Uh, let me see. We could roll for that. We could roll for that. Whatever. Cause I mean, if they've got 20,000 gold pieces worth of stuff, then, you know, what if they've only got two thousand? Um, well, they have three wagons um, that seem pretty pretty well filled with stuff. There's our money for the fucking pint. <laughs> but remember, um, part of what you're trying to do here is you're trying to find out where they are taking all this stuff, and if you steal everything, <laughs> then you'll never find out where they're taking it. <laughs> Seems to me, seems to be to grab one of these 
these guys and ask them a few tough questions. Perhaps using that um, prayer that you talked about last day. Yeah, absolutely. I am 100% behind that. And if you want to do it right now, let's go do it. Because that's You're real. Where are they staying? Um, I'll open up my log and I'll read off some things. But I say first, let's grab some supplies. And I'll go out to the tavern and say, uh, you know, can I uh, check out your basement? You know, and talk and try to talk about that. And it's like, you know, I had a bag break on me. Can I borrow one of your burlap sacks? And try to get that out of too. You want a burlap Maybe sack? Maybe like two or three. Two or three burlap sacks. You know, right. there's a lot of stuff I have to carry. He wants to dress like his hero, Uthgrim. I thought, yeah, yeah. I was wondering if that was burlap. Then the next thing I thought was, are we going to put a bag over this guy's head? Why don't we grab him? Yeah. Grab an expert for that. Well, you, it is like very late at night at this point. Perfect time. Like well past door. midnight. Ask some questions. Oh, really? I think uh, so. How long, like, okay, in fantasy taverns, like, how long is the tavern attended? I've never figured that one out. Um, it varies, but it's late enough now that they're not like serving anymore. Um, you don't know. They they may or may not lock up for the night, but it's it's late enough that, that anybody who's out and about at this time of night isn't up to any good. Perfect. So the kitchen is <laughs> unattended and open. And like the storage rooms are unattended and open. Well, the storage rooms are locked. Okay. I mean, you don't I'll have like free free run of the whole the whole place. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that would be weird. <laughs> yeah, I'll get Thern. Thern, I need you to go steal like freaking four burlap sacks for me. You're know, the greatest thief in the world. Could, you know, not we not do that. that. We have a bag of holding. Yeah. Why are you stealing from this tavern? It's not for that reason, Thurin. We don't need to be stealing from this tavern on our mastic. Oh, okay. Oh. Here, I'll, I'll I bring out like five gold pieces, put it on the table, take the sacks, just go. That's a lot Probably of sacks. Be... Five gold pieces is a lot of sacks. I don't think. No, this is what it's more like a big tip. I'm paying cool. one gold for the sacks, four gold, as they're like, uh, you know, sorry I had to do so that. That's... I bet you could get like a hundred burlap sacks for a gold. <laughs> I mean. Man, this That's is perfect. Right. Uriel doesn't know the value of yeah. money. <laughs> no Uriel, doesn't, Uriel doesn't care. Uriel doesn't care. Uriel's, yeah, but he's paying uh, the he's the paying the barman for the convenience of just. Sorry, yeah. Hope you didn't need these in the morning. I took your sacks. <laughs> <laughs> took your sacks, bro. <laughs> Happened. Sackless. And turn right. see if we could uh, if they got a basement, we might be able to use. Basement. Why a basement? Yeah. I don't is the, oh my god, Baron, you're a thief. You should know about interrogations. Is Argyle still Wait. up? Or Ar Argyle? Argyle? Uh, yes, he is. He's um, like kind of just... cleaning up the common room. Oh, okay. he is awake. Okay. Why do you want a basement? What? Because I don't want to bring them up to our rooms. Or oh, what okay. do we take them? I don't think we'll but we don't them. want screams to be emanating from the basement of this nice man's establishment. He's got an epic beard. He must be a good dwarf. Look, I'm not. I'm not. Your logic is sound. The skull duggery here, but I thought we're just kicking at the door and asking a bunch of questions. And if somebody comes to the door, I'll keep them out. Okay, Earth Grim, if someone kicked down this door and started asking you a bunch of questions, would you answer? What'd you answer? Honest way, Earth Grim. Depends how much pain you put me to. Oh, see, we need to put them to pain, and we need to do that in a private location. I don't agree. Master, I mean, uh, Nevera, cast silence when we're beating the shit out of them, and then we can gag them. And... I can't cast silence. I don't know I that can. spell. I okay, I'm in... it's, a, it's on a point. It's, it can't be cast on one of us, or on him. The problem with casting silence is he can't hear us, and he can't speak to answer our questions. Right, well, but I it'll mean... help us get in. And we do in sessions. Can... We beat the shit out of them, then we let him rest, and then we have, ask him questions. I have zone of truth, so we can know, at least That's know whether he's telling us the truth or not. So, um, yeah. 
So I don't, I don't think we, but we probably should kind of figure out where to take him if we're going to question him. That is a good point. I mean, Uthgrim doesn't, doesn't think we need to make this any more complicated than it is. We go in there. We only have a few questions to ask him. We'll ask him in his room. If anybody comes to interfere, we'll tell them to get the fuck out. And then we leave. It's probably not if a great If anybody idea. comes to interfere, they'll, they'll definitely be shocked at what they find. Yeah. What, could, what could go wrong? What could go wrong? Nonetheless, shocking grass. Who wants to burlap sex to, you know, at least protect his own identity? <laughs> We're like full on bandits now. <laughs> this is. This if is... I create you a magical burlap sack that you can wear over your head or like it's a mask for my head. Not my, from my head. What's funny is this, this was exactly Walter's plan and the Big Lebowski when they were going to go talk to the nihilists. <laughs> the beauty of a plan is its simplicity. <laughs> Once you get close to him, I just grab it and I beat it off. Thurn, <laughs> Thurn puts his foot over his head and says, "I'm ready." I'm ready. Let's let's do I'm this. I'm ready. Like thinking. You know what, Master? I subscribe to your uh, your you know thinking is for other people belief on this one. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely right. So Let's I come go make back and happen. we're gonna beat some guy. Yeah, we're gonna we're just we're just gonna do it and we'll figure out the 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 logistics of it later. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So Uriel latches his cloak and puts on a little bit of his extra cloth on, so he's covering his whole <laughs> face. And Barbara will just press the digitize herself a nice little uh really fragile mask and you know, just wear it like I will can spin I you a nice scarf. Okay. I still want to cover their faces, though. I have no disguise plans whatsoever. <laughs> I can't. I have no capability to do that. So, guys, are we the cult out. now? He doesn't, yeah. even know what, he doesn't even know what you guys are doing. Like. <laughs> yeah. Ultimately, yes. we're the bad guys. Right. <laughs> have you guys ever seen Thurn without his cloak on? I don't think you guys have. I don't know what, what the elves get up to in their spare time. No, I meant he has a set of dark common clothes that he wears over his armor and stuff like that. I do think one thing, we should probably hit a silent spell on the way in somewhere. Yeah, yeah, on the door. When I kick yeah, the, on the door, door, we should probably yeah. silence that. All right, yeah, let's, let's get an order on this. Uthram, you kick down the door. Mastic, you follow. Then it's okay. me. Then it's Stern, and he's going to be clean up. If anyone needs to get killed, which I hope that's not true, Stern will be the one taking care of that. Well, let's grapple him. Tyvo and I will be carrying ropes, so will Nevera, and we we all hog tie him. How does that sound? Should I augury this first, just to see if Plankinen thinks this is a good idea or not? Or as much as I love your plan, yeah. Uriel, you have subscribed four people in your order, but five people will be carrying things. Rope? I you mean... are counting more people as going in than you put in your order of going in. It's Grim, Mastig, yeah. and Thurin will all be Tyvel fighting. Tyvel wants Augury. Tyvel's totally and on then, the Augury train. And then Tyvel, you and I will all be using rope to hog die. You're not I understanding think... what I'm saying. You said Uthgrim and Mastig go in first, then you go in, then Thurin goes in. And then you never said Tyvel. when me or Tyvel go in, or if we go in, but then you're, you have us in your little head plan, carrying yeah, things you, you guys, for you. You guys go last. That was, we go. I was I was saying it as you two go last. Tybo would like to be up front. Okay, Tybo can be up front. I, I mean, like, I mean, like, like Uther Mastic Tybo, because if stuff hits the fan, Tybo is a tank. Like that's, that's his true. thing. I'm not used yes, to but having through, all right? of your tanks in the front is a terrible plan because you leave the squishies in the back open to being attacked. That's why I was hoping Thurin could, could If they been, come in they behind could. us, I guess. Well, this I love that Lex basically was able to hit for a minute while we yeah. were playing. And the, the game just kept going. It was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I thought like, you guys don't need me for this. <laughs> yeah. No, I totally, we didn't. That was the best part. Sorry, should, we, I, should, we break, should we break out the tokens for this? Yeah, I am, I'm, I'm going to break out the, uh, I'm going to break out the, the rune stones. And I'm going to augury Klingon in about this. So we are going to go to one of the cultist inns and just bust in a door 
and grab a guy and beat their plans out of them. <laughs> that, that, Look, okay. Simple. It's yep. simple. Is this, is this going to lead to a good result or a bad result or both or neither? Okay. What does Clay then have to say about it? Hyvel would chuckle gently and say, let's have Uthgrim keep his hands off any pots while we're in there. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh.